All right, Tyler Clevin, the K train. Choo choo. Been an absolute blast getting to watch Tyler Clevin develop from a do not draft on some boards going into the 2020 selection process to then scoring 20 goals in college in the span of three shortened seasons, more or less. I think it was 90 games, 20 goals. This guy, absolute mutant hitting people, and then steps into the NHL. And he did something I didn't really know was a part of his game, at least watch him in college. It almost felt like he was a free-range missile sometimes, just throwing his body, throwing hits, throwing his uh, stick in terms of offensive shot opportunities. He got to the NHL, Pilsy. He flipped the switch, and all of a sudden, he was like the most poised defenseman on the team. I couldn't believe it. And we didn't see him throw any big hits, at least in my mind. I can't think of any. And we kind of thought, okay, now he doesn't have the shackles of uh, kind of a tightly regulated physical game in college. He's going to let uh, things fly. And he didn't do that. But that's credit to him showing that he's he doesn't – like I would have thought Tyler Clevin would have been like, okay, for me to make an impact and to impress DJ Smith – I got to be physical. I'm a big body. That's how I'm going to make it. But like you mentioned, he did it more not through physical play, but through poise, through making smart, simple decisions, playing responsible. And look, I'm not sure where I stand if I think Tyler Clevin is NHL ready come next season, but he sure impressed me with how he looked. And I'm looking at the graphic now. If you're watching on YouTube, the fan grade was a B, a 62.9%. Fans voted that. I'm right with you guys. I'm giving Tyler Clevin a B rating. Ooh, I'm going to go B plus just because he he surprised me with what his skills were. I was expecting him, again, to come in, maybe show off the, the shot, which, I mean, he did. How many of his shots were blocked or missed? Not many. I feel like a lot of them got through and were able to hit the net. And just in offensive situations, just the poise that he showed was was really remarkable for being a 20-year-old fresh out of college in a situation that he was coming into with so many injuries on the back end and really kind of jumping in like the treadmill's going at 10 out of 10 and he's got to jump in and, and figure his footing out right away. And he did just that. Eight games for Tyler Clevin, two assists, two points. His expected goals percentage, 61.4. His course, he's 62.8. Averaged 14 minutes and 41 seconds Per game, burned a year off his contract as you do when you come out of college like he did at the end of the season. So now he has two years left on his entry-level deal with the Ottawa Senators. Just not not many other ways I can say just super impressed with every aspect of his game. I'm with you, Pilsy. Like eight games, that's great. Can you do it for, for an extended period of time? We'll see. But having him as a top pair guy in Belleville and getting him those puck touches... I mean, Brad Schlossman, I think, nailed it when he said it. He's like, there is so much developing left for Tyler Clevin. It would be a shame to see him get pigeonholed into a certain role at the NHL level and not allowing him to reach his full potential. So your left side right now has Shabbat, has Sanderson, has Branstrom. And you don't need waivers for Clevin. I think it's kind of a a no-brainer as much as like we're probably the biggest Tyler Clevin fans going. But when you look at what he can do as a guy who gets called up midway through the season, I think it's just a, it's an easier decision for the team to make to start him in Belleville playing 22, 23 minutes a night and then call him up in due time. He will, will, will play NHL games next year, though. Yep, I think so as well. And uh, Mark, Mark Mathot had a really good insight on him saying, look, I think this guy has more than bottom pair potential. I think he will eventually... Um, overcome Artem Zub's role and we we heard it Brad Barry what was the one thing he told Tyler Clevin in his final year of development hey I'm gonna get you on the right side here because in the NHL for a left shot defenseman there's three jobs if you can play both sides you've now doubled that and you've made yourself available for six different roster spots and I think with Tyler Clevin there's no rush like I don't want to sound like a Clevin hater. Uh, I'll spin zone it more as Pilsy preaching patience. Nailed that one. Um, That I think if you develop him right and have him go in Belleville and play big minutes, just like he did in his last year at UND, I think you can really shape a proper middle six, uh, middle six, (laughs) uh, middle four defenseman. Like I, I don't think he has top pair potential, which is not a knock on him. Who does have top pair potential? Not many people. But second pair, for sure. Um, (laughs) 
I, I more meant he could be on the second pair or a third pair. Okay. Um, but the thing is, I really think I want to see him go to Belleville and hone those physical skills up against men, up against guys that are smarter, experienced, faster, all those kinds of things. And I want to see him be able to lay those hits out in Belleville so that he can bring that part of his game along with the poise, along with the responsible uh, decision-making up to the NHL when he is ready. Because this decor is stacked finally, Ross. There's no rush to get Tyler Clevin in there. So I'm focusing on the long game here, and I want his developmental path to go through Belleville for a bit. Six foot five, 220 pounds, hits like a like a mutant. Like, like a train? Yeah, well, I mean, Some his, might favorite, say. <laughs> his favorite player growing up was Nicholas Cronwell. So you can kind of put the pieces of the puzzle together based on that guy from Detroit back in the day. But just a, a very soft-spoken kid when we had him on. You know, he's, he's very confident, I think, in his own abilities. And it just it pisses me off when I still go to Elite Prospects today and they still have a blurb about him in the 2020 draft uh, guide. Like, buddy, that was three years ago. You're not going to update your take on him. And it's just kind of like, imagine like him and his family, they go to that website and it's just like, why? Like, it just feels like an unnecessary put down. You, you know what? I That's a chip on his shoulder though. I think that's a good thing because he's the kind of guy, I don't think he would publicly be like, uh, I'm proving everyone wrong, et cetera. But I think privately and in his own mind and his own training, he, he keeps, uh, he keeps tabs on that. Clevin quote, Clevin has a booming one timer. But the Salem Bear has more confirmed sightings. Like these guys think they're funny. I don't. I don't even understand that reference. I don't know. It's like I guess Bigfoot, something like that. He's yeah. rarely ready to shoot, but occasionally hits a teammate with a crafty pass or activates down low. Yeah, but keep in mind the, these are uh, these are notes on him after only what one year in college. No, it was before he went to college. So that's yeah. why it's weird. It's like you go to his page on Elite Prospects and it's still up. It's like yeah. buddy, it's three years ago. Like you're not going to update your takes. I feel like that, it's not only Elite Prospects, but a lot of these scouting, they they see the player in their draft year and that's their opinion of them for the rest of their career. Like they can't, they can't. Do, anyways, that's, that's a whole other. <laughs> but I mean, this is the guy to have the conversation about with because Definitely. how many scouts just completely wrote him off in, in, and he hadn't even played college. Well, and it's hilarious, Ross. He was labeled as a do not draft. The Ottawa Senators traded up to get him. I feel like the online community were howling at that, laughing that the Sens decided to trade up and that the Leafs got two amazing prospects out of the deal. Where are those guys now? I don't know. Couldn't tell you. Yeah. But, but what I do know is I'm happy that Tyler Clevin's an Ottawa Senator because he brings a bit of a bit of something different. On the back end, the Sens are, are loaded with puck movers right now, and he just brings that physical intensity. Um, I'm just excited to see what he's like in four or five years, where it's like he is like we talk about JBD, how his confidence is growing year after year. Like you give this kid three or four years to really kind of fill out his frame and and you know be that pro hockey player over and over again, and and I think this guy is going to be going to be a very very tough player to play against. Let's put it that way. And if he can round out his offensive side of the game, if he can be a 25 to 35 point guy on top of it, now we're now we're looking at a player that uh, that's going to turn some heads and maybe some apologies uh, will be needed for uh, for what the what the scouting community kind of put him through during his draft year. So hey, we've been Tyler Clevin believers since day one, and it's going to continue that way here on Locked On Senators for the foreseeable future, because every time that we kind of push him in the right direction, he comes back and does something sick that makes us more fired up as Sens fans that he is a part of this organization. So next year, you're with me though, start in Belleville, make the jump mid season. I think definitely start in Belleville. I, I, I'm not sure if he's going to make the jump mid uh, mid season Ross, just because this team is going to be hopefully in a different spot where it's not about meaningful games. It's, it's about contending in the playoffs and to throw a, a young defenseman into that mix can be a little difficult. So like I mentioned, I don't have any rush. So if he plays all year in Belleville and maybe only gets a handful of call-ups and a couple of uh, games, a cup of coffee in the NHL, I'm okay with that. Cause I got no rush on this kid. I got all the faith in the world in him. And I think he is going to be a part of this roster in the future. 